will be the first in a series of videos around making a circuit board using a CNC mill and a few other techniques. I will be using my Tormach PCNC 440 for this exercise, but there are many other solutions in the market. I really love my Tormach for its power and versatility, and I'm looking forward to this series and seeing how it evolves. I should note, I'm relatively new to CNC milling and PCB milling specifically, so constructive criticism is always welcome. Just leave me a comment below. Given that, there are likely going to be mistakes along the way, and I'll try to point them out when I can. Also, working with CNC mills and machining metal in general can be dangerous. If you intend to try to follow along with this or other videos on my channel, please note that you do so at your own risk. The purpose of this board is to allow you to switch between a tethered and untethered power source. For example, you might want to go from being plugged into the wall for powering your electronics to using a battery, but you don't want to lose power during that switch. With the right electronics soldered onto the board I'm going to be making, you could do just that. Let's take a look at the model in Fusion 360 where I made it. You can see it's a pretty simple circuit. I'm using two-sided copper FR4 board. The idea is that we will cut holes where needed and mill away copper to leave behind the circuit we want. Now let's take a look at the tools we'll use throughout this process. First is safety gear. Safety goggles are pretty important when operating a CNC mill. The mask will become necessary when we tin the board using a liquid tinning chemical. I also recommend wearing some latex gloves, especially when you're tinning, and some clothes that you're not too worried about as you might pick up metal dust in the clothing or even some tinning material when performing the tinning operation, which can be bad for you. Next is holding strategy. There are a lot of ways to hold down material when you're going to be milling it. In this case, in the simple exercise that I'm doing, I'm using 3M Scotch 410M double-sided pressure-sensitive self-adhesive tissue tape, and I'll be taping it directly to a wooden waste board. There's a link below in the description of this video if you want to buy this tape. Next are the drilling bits. I'll share feeds and speeds in the videos that show the drilling operations. What you see here for tools from left to right are a 45 degree two flute spot drill. Next is a 58 drill for making one millimeter holes for the various components. Then the number 39 drill, which will make my two and a half millimeter reference holes. We'll actually use these holes not only to fasten the board down once we've completed it, but also as a reference point for flipping the board and milling the back side. Finally, the number 28 drill for the 3.5 millimeter conductor holes. Note that the drills are all high-speed steel jobber drills. They are titanium nitrate coated. All of my drills came with my Tormach. You can find similar sets on their website if you're interested. Next, the cutting tools. On the left is a two-flute zirconium nitride coated 30 degree V-bit. On the right is a 1.5 millimeter titanium coated tungsten carbide engraving bit. I'm pretty close up in this picture so that you can hopefully see the detail of the bits. I bought the V-bit on Precise Bits and the engraving bit on Amazon as part of a set. Links are below in the description if you're interested in purchasing them. You can also see here that they're mounted in their tool holder for the Tormach. After I finish milling the circuit, we will have a little bit of post-processing. I'll probably have to scrape a little bit of leftover copper away with an X-Acto. I also will probably have some small burrs, which I can use 320 grit emery paper to remove. And finally, I will want to remove any corrosion without pulling off the thin layer of copper, so I can use a little bit of metal polish for that. Not pictured is rubbing alcohol, which I will use to clean the board afterwards, and latex gloves to handle the board without worrying about getting new fingerprints or oil on it. With a nice clean board, I can then use some wire and tinning solution to tin the remaining copper. This will help prevent corrosion, but the main reason to tin is to provide an easier surface to get solder to adhere to. 
Also, you can get a little more amperage when you tin. Okay, let's get into the first of the cutting. I started with the V-bit as an eighth inch end mill. I'm running this end mill with the following feeds and speeds. These are rather conservative, but I'm pretty new to PCB milling, so I didn't want to take too much risk with these small bits. Also, I started with the engraving bit because the mill was mounted in my Tormach, so a tool change was not necessary. There are actually two operations here. First is engraving the text out of the top of the board. This is done purely for aesthetics. There are a couple of text engraves where something went wrong and it cleared away too much material. I'll point out where these problems occur in the video. I'm not sure what went wrong there. If I make the board again, I'll take a closer look at that toolpath in Fusion 360. Second is trace isolation. I'll be coming back over this copper and removing all but the traces, but several of the holes were so close together that the mill I used to do the adaptive clearing couldn't get between, so the trace around them makes sure that we isolate the circuit fully. I recently ordered some 0.2 millimeter end mills so that I don't have to do this in the future. And there you have it. The top traces and text all cut and the board ready for me to start drilling some holes. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell, or leave me a comment below. And as always, happy making!